Hello, and welcome to Post Processing with me. I'm Janice Sullivan from Sullivan J Photography, and we're going to process this image from here to here. I started off in Lightroom and made sure I did my chromatic aberration and fixed my lens and then looked at the shadows and pulled them up a little bit. But I noticed that it was really noisy in here. So I decided to pull back the shadows just a tad. I was debating on how much to do. So next I went into my presets and I decided to use Cloudy Punch. You can get those presets if you're a member in our membership program. Just check out the link below. I use a plugin called the Fader, and that can help me when Lightroom has a, too much of a punch. This will, I can decrease the opacity with this plugin. So my preset I liked, but I decided it was way too much, so I turned the opacity down and made it I was happy with 27% then I took it into Photoshop where I always make a copy that's just my precaution so I wanted to select the black so I went ahead and used the selection tool and then on the left side of the image to get the blacks on that side I did a shift click and grabbed those and made it into a mask I next went ahead and played going over the top just to see what kind of a mess I had and I realized that the bottom is going to give me some problems the bottom petals but that's okay that's why I moved them back and forth and we have a mask so I knew I was going to be able to fix it with my mask then what I went ahead and did was take the mask and I inverted the mask this way I can see the little petals there at the bottom I knew I needed to fix that so I selected white and started painting into the mask. I had to get up close to really get into the mask and make sure that I needed to remove some of that black that I had done with the levels. So I'm cleaning it up here and taking more details into cleaning. Getting into detail here, moving around to make sure if there was any other issues. Now what I did was I went to the mask and I needed to feather some of the mask because it was really rough. Next I decided to go ahead and just make sure that I have black everywhere that I want. So I just took the dropper tool and looked at the properties and inf I looked at the information to make sure that all my blacks are blacks because when you print you really need to make sure that they are actually black so you can see all the zeros at the top and that is basically saying that yes I have no color and it is pure black. Now what I like to do is clean up the image so I made a new layer and I used the healing brush and cleaned up some of the noticeable problems that we get when we get up close to our images especially right in here in the green there's some really bright areas and chromatic aberrations that happen so i'll clean up the main parts with the spot healing tool brush and right in here there's a big problem so get rid of the big things first because when you post process, you don't want to deal with that later. So just do some basic cleaning for now. And then over here, when I have in this area, I decided to go ahead and paint some of the issues instead of clone stamping, just kind of getting rid of the brown color. So I used the paintbrush and used the dropper and selected colors with the Alt and Option and started cleaning up this area with painting and I use a flow of 58 on this one I like to use flow because I can keep going in the same location and making more and more changes if needed I next went ahead and took all of my basic adjustments and made it into a group 
And then I decided to really focus on the image. So I went into Nick Color Effects Pro and I played with the detail extractor and I made sure it was about 40% looking at the flower and bringing out those details. I went ahead and saved it on a layer in Photoshop and then added a mask. I decided to get rid of some of the details because it was just a little too clumpy and I didn't want it feeling that way on some of the petals. So I like to go back and forth. You're seeing that a lot. So I can really see in detail up close and then I'll go back to see how it looks farther away. That's just the way I like to work. So here I am just cleaning it up. Then I look at the reflective flower in the black plexiglass and decided I think I need to really focus on the edges. So I went ahead and looked at a white neutralizer in Color Effects Pro and was focusing on the background of the flower and on the outside of the top flower. I decided to go with the cool and play with that but I also wanted a little glamour glow so that was helping it really pop but I added a mass because I didn't want the glow to be too prominent. I also changed the opacity down to 69% and removed the glow in the middle of the flower and just lightly around the outside so it wasn't so prominent. And of course at the bottom, the reflective flower, I took care of that also. Next, I did a little cropping just to see how it would look. I make a layer and I clean more to get rid of some more of the problems. And in here I painted. So I painted and I use a flow of 18% and gently just cleaned up some of the areas that would catch my eye and stop the flow of these beautiful petals from this Gerber daisy. So the last part of the image is really getting into the, la the details of everything. So next what I decided at the bottom of the flower, the reflective flower, I added some more petals because the bottom was stopping the pattern of the flower. So I went ahead and just cloned in a little bit more petals down in there so it would flow nicely. I cleaned it up a little bit more and adjusted the crop again because I made sure I didn't delete any of my pixels and everything was perfect. Mm -hmm. 